super fun stuff. Lately, I've been so busy with my day job that I've had to postpone some recent fun projects. However, in my odd spare downtime I've had, I've pieced together a recent prototype. If you've seen my recent videos or Reddit posts, you know that I'm a Warhammer 40k Gene Shielder Colt fan. Um, with the new kill team that came out this year, I've been putting together a kill team for the Colt. But I was having some difficulty. With the Colt, more so than other armies, they have a lot of options. Which seems great, but raises a lot of questions on how to build your team. For the most part, Gene Shielder Colt games are pretty straightforward. Uh, they attack hard, but they're squishy. The, they're great in melee, but they're very mediocre in shooting. And with the low point games as kill team, every point really does matter. So a little while back, I asked the question, what are the most cost-effective units in, in, for a Gene Sealer Cult army? Can I get a rough statistical model based around Gene Sealer Cult units? And what does this really tell me? So my initial approach was to make an Excel spreadsheet and do some rough calculations. After a little time, I was able to create a basic list of best units to worst units. Again, this wasn't perfect. It was rough, didn't take everything into account. However, it gave me some good insight and some valid build paths. After looking at and discussing it with folks on Reddit and some other places, I came to a conclusion that I needed more. This was a good start, but it's an awful format and it's not really super accurate or anything. So I decided to create a web application that could do calculations quickly, efficiently, and put it in a form where I could use the information a little bit better. So after a few days of on and off development, I created an early prototype. Uh, this initial run used the, the basic kill team statistics from the codex. So here is the cult analysis tool, or which I like to call it the cat. The initial focus was Gene Sealer cult. However, I did integrate a few other armies in here which later could lead to full expansion of the kill team uh, list, but right now I'm gonna focus strictly on Gene Stealer Cult. The goal of this tool is to analyze every unit in the cult, every build for that unit, and compare them all around um, while putting them against uh, an equivalent unit of measure. Usually people use a tactical marine or a regular space marine for the equivalent unit of measure. So if I click the app, I'll go into it. Now you can see some basic stuff. Stuff. Um, I got my banner, I got a spinning icon. I just kind of like the spinning icons. I think they're kind of fun. First you'll notice a selection field called Chosen Army. Uh, here you get to choose one of four armies. It defaults to Gene Shoulder Cult. However, I did put information about three different other armies, Tyranids, Space Marines, and Death Watch. Um, next, you have a field called Equivalent Unit. Here's a field that you will compare everything in one, your army that you chose to a specific unit. The default unit that it picks is a Tactical Marine. That's kind of the standard around the, around the, the scene. So, um, but this plays a huge role on how it can dictate how you can kill this person or this person can kill you. If you see down the list, I can choose other equivalent units as well. I have all the units from all those four armies from before. But for now, let's keep it Tactical Marine. Then we get to this details page, and this is the build. Now, a Tactical Marine's pretty simple. It's got one build, right? He has a bolt gun, frag grenade, crack grenade, and just a de default melee. However, if I pick, let's pick someone else, like uh, an Intercessor. If I scroll down, he has three different builds different rifles, if I pick a different unit, same kind of thing, um, like a Termiga. You can see he has a whole bunch of different kinds of uh, uh, weapons and gear that he can have. But let's go back, we'll go back to our Tactical Marine. Obviously he has one build, so we'll pick that. Um, the first thing is we see right now, you, so you, you choose your army and you choose what your army wants to go against to get our comparison. So the first card that we have is called Equivalent Unit Details. So if I expand that card, I can see the build for that specific unit. At first glance, you can see that it has his name, specialisms, points, basic stats, and then we have his weapon, right? We have all the weapons that's assigned to him as well as his gear. We have all the rules attached to him. And then we start to see the first instances of the statistical model at work. 
the, this details right here only compared the equivalent unit to itself. So if he used his bolt gun, he would get 0.666 hits. So uh, two thirds hits. If he was wounding with that weapon, he would basically split that in half. If he was trying to um, wound after the per after his equivalent unit gets a save, it would be less wounds. And then we have an out of action. So how? What's my chances of taking a unit in this case himself out of action if he was shooting against himself? And here we can see the different weapons. And for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, bolt gun, bolt piss is the same strength and everything. Um, the first thing I have to say right off the bat is I don't take into account a couple things, right? This is purely strength and some special room rules, uh, damage and things like that. I don't take into account range. Um, I don't take into account all the different types. For instance, rapid fire has two different kinds of shots. Um, However, I do, I'm, I'm just looking at the standard way of how I can compare a unit at a general level to a different unit. However, so we can, we can see that the Tactical Marine has all these beautiful stats that all do different kinds of things. That's great. However, we're not looking for this, right? I'm looking to compare every unit in my army to this equivalent unit. So we got our equivalent unit, so I'll minimize that. Next card is called Chosen Army Details. So here it gets even more in, in the in the weeds, right? So if I expand this, I have it set on Gene Stealer Cult. We get to see that there are all the different units in Gene Stealer Cult, right? We have the Acolytes, we have Aberrants, we have the Neophytes, the Metamorphs, and the Gene Stealers. So we can do just a quick glance in this table. We can see how much is the general points for this, those type of units. Their moves, their weapon skill, ballistic skill, etc., etc., etc. So just all the basic things. But now I want to look at the specific build for each one of those types of units. So for instance, let's expand the Acolyte Leader. If I open that, now I'm starting to get a heck of a lot more information, right? We can see these different, I guess, dark gray lines called builds. So for like the Leader, there's five different builds, right? The first one is the default build, just, you know, Plain vanilla, basically. Build two is the same one, except he replaces his auto pistol with a hand flamer. And then down here we have a bone sword, bone sword with hand flamer, and then the lash whip and bone sword. But similar to the equivalent unit detail that we had before, where it calculates hits and wounds and stuff like that, we do the same thing for each of the builds. So we first go through each of the weapons and says, how many hits could they get? How many wounds could they get? how many wounds after the equivalent unit has their save, if they have a save, and what's the chances of taking that equivalent unit out of action. Um, so here's where it gets a little tricky, because in the back end, um, or the code itself, I do take a lot of special rules into account, especially for Gene Stealer Cult. For instance, the Cultist Knife is just that additional attack that they get. Um, Rending Claw is... Uh, the AP minus four if it's a six plus, so that's all taken into account. Uh, hand flamers are auto hit, so that's taken into account. And that's why we can see between a hand flamer and auto pistol, a pistol hit will hit you half a time, while that the hand flamer will hit you three times because it's auto hit, makes sense. But when you come to wounds, you know, you're you're gonna probably statistically get one wound with a hand flamer. So that's why hand flamers are so good, because they ought to hit. Um, I, do, I divulge a little bit. So then I went through all these statistics. I went through all the different builds, and there's a there's I found out there was about uh, 99, 100 builds for Gene Sealer Cult for all the different units. There's all specific builds. Um, I start calculating these scores. How can I compare them to each other to tell me which ones, in this case, could kill that equivalent unit the best? Pretty straightforward, right? So I first made a melee effective score. The melee effective score takes all the uh, takes the strongest melee combination he can do against a character, including pistols, um, and comp and does a, a little uh, mass stuff with his points, saying for his points, how good is he at killing the equivalent unit? 
for instance, um, since it's taking in, in pistols, um, you can see that for a standard build of eight points of Acolyte Leader with just the standard gear, he has a score of 46.8. If we put the hand flamer in, which obviously increases the chance of valve action, and it's a pistol, it increases to score 51, even though there's 10 points, right? Um, another good one to really look at is the fighter. Fighter has a lot of cool weapons, right? Um, for instance, we have the heavy rock saw and we have a heavy rock cutter. And the heavy rock cutter I, eh, easily could be the best weapon in Kill Team. I mean, easily. This between the, the strength times two, AP minus four, the two damage, but the special rule where it, you can take out a target instantly. As you can tell, the chances of taking a target out or equivalent unit with that is very, very high. So we would see a much higher equivalent score with a weapon like that than just a standard rending claw, for instance. Um, shooting affecting this score is just taking their best shooting score usually the units have pistols i do not take in account uh grenades in this score um i want to do a grenadeless score for this one um since grenades are kind of one unit uses them every so often and if i did grenades grenade would win every time because it has much higher chance in taking out a, a unit than a, a pistol um however i did let's see demolition demolition charge i did count that because it's a, kind of a special uh, weapon compared to a grenade in a way. Then I made an attack effective score. Uh, I combined the melee score and the shooting score and I got an attack effectiveness. Um, if the shooting was a pistol and the pistol was in the melee, I did not count that twice. Um, but this is like a generic score saying, what is my best combination of a unit with a specific build at killing, taking out of action, the, the equivalent unit that I picked. Pretty straightforward. Um, also for the points. So it calculates a lot of, a lot of things in one, one little score. And the score doesn't really have a bounds per se. I mean, you could have zero, you could have obviously 200 and up. Um, but it just gives me a, a glimpse of what kind of units are better than others. Then I have a couple other scores, and they're just pretty easy scores. One's a combined melee. Uh, that's just taking every melee weapon that a unit unit's build has and just adding them up, adding the scores. I have the same with the shooting, adding every shooting. That includes grenades, uh, a combined effectiveness uh, shooting score. And then a combined attack effectiveness is just adding those up together just to get a generic if I took every weapon that guy has and take that into consideration, what would be his full attack effectiveness score compared to his points? Um, again, it depends what you're kind of looking at, right? Do I want to look at the best possible way of a unit with a specific build to kill the equivalent unit? Or do I want to look at the whole build in general, right? Um, it's, it kind of makes a difference because, for instance... Uh, Metamorphs, for instance, right? We have a Rending Claw. We have a Metamorph Talon. Well, you can't use both. You have to pick one. So uh, you would see his regular melee score is going to be lower than his combined, obviously, because he has two choices. And they're both good in their own right. Um, from my calculations, I would choose a Rending Claw of a Metamorph Talon, but um, that's just another effective score, another thing to consider. So I did it for every unit and every build to that unit. And like I said before, there's just about a hundred for Gene Steeler Cult in general. Um, so doing it via software and code, it really kind of saves you time. I'm not hand jamming anything. Um, I did have to go through certain special rules like that rock cutter. I mean, that's a huge special rule to consider and you can't leave that out. Um, and there's a few other ones. I mean, even, even say, like the Power Hammer on the Aberrant. Uh, well, it's great, but you also have that modifier. It's minus one to hit. You know, he doesn't hit as easily. So that's taken into account. And as you can see, just in the Aberrant, a Power Pick hits more than a Power Hammer. Makes sense, because you got that hit minus one right there. So I took all those, and that's great. And all. I, I could step through each one of these and see 
which ones were the best, but that I'm lazy and that would take way too long. So the third card I made was called an effectiveness ranking score or table. So if I expand that, this takes into account every unit in that army, every effectiveness score, naming its unit and its build, and I can easily sort and see all the, all the different kinds of units I can have in my army. So, for instance, I like I like total effectiveness the best. I like to think of the best way a unit can kill this space marine, right? So, what's the the two number ones? Very simple, right? Heavy rock cutter, the special rule, strength time two, AP. I mean, uh, you can't you can't beat that, especially for four points. So he's very high on the list. The next one, demolition charge. Again, very strong, high powered weapon. However, this does not take into account that you can only use it once, right? This is only taking into account what's his, the best way he could kill this person once. You know, just if he had one chance to do it, what would be it? Uh, after that, we have Heavy Rock Saw. Again, another really good choice. Uh, you know, strength times two and that kind of thing. It's basically the Heavy Rock Cutter, but hits a little bit better, but doesn't have that cool special roll. Um, after that, we have Aberrants with the Power Hammer. Uh, we have Acolyte uh, leaders and Metamorph leaders, and here's where it kind of flip-flops back and forth, so I'm going to expand this 100 rows. I'm just going to show everything. Um, I've noticed that Hand Flamer, for the cost that it is in Kill Team, is very uh, efficient. Um, ha the only issue is the range, right? It's a 6-inch range. It's not, not, not extremely far, but the Auto Pistol is not... I mean, 12 inches. But the problem is their BS skill, right? BS of four only hits half the time. Hand Flamer auto hits everything. I mean, that's pretty huge if you think about it, especially for two points. You, that's pretty hard to beat. Um, and if you're playing the cult right, you're going to be in their face. You're, you're, if you're sitting back shooting with the cult, you're doing something wrong. And we'll go down. So we have, you know, the leaders, we got the hybrids. And then we see a gunner. He finally showed up. Uh, the seismic cannon. It's it's a kind of underrated weapon a little bit. Everyone always thinks the mining laser is the best. But the seismic cannon has the two different kinds of shots. Uh, for the points, it's pretty pretty okay. Um, again, you got to look at the ballistic skill. It's not high. Um, the one thing that seismic cannon has over the mining laser is multiple shots. The mining laser with that one shot really hurts you. It it really, because you're really taking that one chance of trying to hit that thing when you have, you know, what, two chances, right? Or I guess it depends which one you pick. Um, but we keep going. So, uh, of course, Acolyte leaders, Metamorph leaders, they're always pretty high. And, of course, Acolyte hybrids and Metamorph hybrids with hand flamers are always high. Um, what I've seen is Acolyte and Metamorphs, they kind of, you kind of pick either one. So Acolyte Hybrid is cheaper, but you get that one extra attack with that Cult Knife, right? The Cultist Knife. Metamorphs is a point more expensive. However, you get to have a full attack with whatever main weapon you have. So, I mean, it's I guess it depends on how many points you have left in your kill team. And we come down and we see some Gene Stealers popping up, which... In a lot of games, a lot of people are probably thinking, why aren't these higher on the list? Well, again, I'm not taking into consideration movement. Movement's huge, right? Um, I'm not taking into consideration, um, I don't know, some of the other special rules. Uh, for instance, uh, Gene Stealer cult, or the Gene Stealers themselves don't get the uh, the, uh, the extra move in the beginning of, in a, of a match, like the rest of the cults, the cult units. Um, so that's not taken account. Um, toxin sacks and acid malls are taken account. And what I've seen is between, if you had to choose between Scything Talon, acid mall, and Renning Claw, I mean, the scores are all very the same because of the acid mall. Acid mall is pretty freaking good. Except you can only have one of them, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it says in the book. You can have one, one guy with an acid mall. Um, and we can keep going down and you can see... More and more units flip flop back and forth. Uh, um, you can see like Ash, the leader with the Lash Whips and Bone Sword, right? That's lower because it's more expensive, and I don't take into account the Lash Whip, right? 
the Lash Whip just means you can uh, attack one more time if he's killed, but how, how, the real question is, how can I scale some of the special rules to points? It's kind of difficult, and it's, could be a little subjective, I'm not sure yet. I'm thinking of some good ways of doing the least movement and things like that. And we go down, and the last one on the list are usually the neophytes. Um, they're all kind of in the same boat. I don't really take cult icons in consideration. I just added those as a point modifier thing. Um, it's again, that's really hard to gauge, right? It's a six inch around the character. Um, it kind of depends on how many guys are in that bubble. Um, but so I added that in just for points wise. Um, but. Neophytes, for the most part, you know, not that great ballistic skill. The weapons are pretty underpowered. Uh, they don't really have any special melee. You know, they're, they don't have a lot to offer, but they do have a place in army, no matter where, they're on, where each unit is on this list. I think every unit has a place in a kill team, right? My neophyte, neophytes can come in and just kind of screen a little bit, right? Just more guys on the field for the army to worry about. Um, I would recommend not maybe having, because I've seen a lot of kill team armies online and stuff where they have the neophytes in the back, right? I'm going to give them a cool mining laser and sit them in the back. And basically, if you're going to do that, you're just, you're praying to God that you hit one guy and you pray to God that you can take that guy out like once maybe in the whole match because he's gonna miss a lot and is it really worth it or should i you know save my money for an acolyte hybrid or a metamorph right but it's basically like i can get two of these guys or one of those guys in a way so um but th this is the whole point of this is to show which units have the best killing power in our army um in the other spreadsheet, I did also toughness, squishiness. We know that the cult is very squishy. It's known, it's obvious, right? We have a pretty crappy save. Our toughness is pretty low. Um, we all have one wound, except the Aberrant has two. Um, I guess the Gene Stealers themselves have it invulnerable, so that's pretty cool. With the extended care pace, you could do that. That might, that'd be good to compare those two. Um, but they're squishy, so most of the scores for that are pretty low when I did it on the Excel doc before versus I haven't done on here yet. Um, now I have done, I did fix a lot of my math here than I did in Excel, right? <coughs> Via code, I can do a lot more than just, you know, pumping numbers in Excel. Excel is great and all, don't get me wrong, but I can do a lot more with this and I can show it in a cool fashion. That makes more sense. So, what, what, what do we get through this? So, we looked through every unit in an army, we compared it to equivalent unit, and we could calculate a score based on its points and based on its killing ability, how effective it is, effective it is at killing that specific unit. More to come down the road, right? I will calculate how effective is a unit to survive against an attack from this other equivalent unit, right? If this guy shoots his bolt gun at this acolyte fighter, what's his chances of survival? I mean, it's probably not that great, right? I mean, it might be okay, but nothing spectacular. It's not like Terminator armor or something crazy like that. Um, and the last part, so if I close this out, is I can just save this to CSV, which is just a file format that Excel can use. Um, this is just an easy way if you never want to use this tool and just wanted the table kind of thing real quick you could do it and then i've added that functionality um what i'll do is uh i will put the latest uh csv for the effectiveness rankings uh below so anyone can download it and look at it um it's it's it'll be a good glance for a lot of people i'll only focus on cult like I said, I can I can do Tyranids, right? I have not many units for Tyranids as much as Cult. But when I open like a Termagant, right? There's a lot of builds for Termagant. If I look at like a Lictor, guess what? There's one build. But then I can look at effectiveness for that too, right? 
So if I look at Tyranids, who are the most effective killers, right? Well, Gene Stealers kind of take the cake for that one a little bit. Lictors are pretty high on the list too. Um, again, this doesn't take into account how easy a unit can get killed. So a Lictor is a little bit higher than the Gene Stealer with that. So we would see that Gene Stealer score to go much higher. Um, but I go past this a little bit. A um, couple things with this tool. Um, I'm just showing you guys what I've been working on and I probably will not share this publicly. Um, I don't think uh, GW would like that. I think it would get shut down pretty quick, but um, right now it's still just a prototype. It's a work in progress. I know it's not perfect. I, I know I have a lot more work to do to really get some scores down. Um, Again, the next big part I plan to tackle is the effectiveness of the units, um, the surviving inside equivalent unit. Uh, after that, you know, I'll probably look at more like the movements and other special skills that could raise or lower a certain uh, certain build. Um, I've only focused mainly on the cult. Um, for instance, I do have Death Watch in here, however. I don't have all the special skills associated with them. Um, I don't take in a lot of things into account other than survivability uh, when I have, you know, because I usually use this for equivalent units. Um, as we, we've seen a lot of matches, Death Watch is pretty high on the list for awesome kill teams at the moment. But, so, that is the breakdown of the, the cat tool. Like I said, it needs work, but for the amount of time I put in, on and off for maybe a couple days, it's turning out pretty good. Um, below, below, I'll post the latest Gene Seller Cult CSV file so you can download it, look at it. I know it's not perfect, but it'll be great if you know you guys give some feedback. Uh, tell me what you think. What you, do you think I could do better? What other functionality would you like to see in this kind of tool? Or what other things should I consider in my calculations? I'm going to continue to work on this in my spare time, on and off, and hopefully I can give more updates down the road, but um, it could help, it could potentially help all the armies if I have the information. Um, but like I said, the Gene Sutter Colt's my focus right now. Um, I always think they need the most love anyways, but, um, and I won't change the name. So the name's staying even if I do all the other armies, so just deal with that. But that's about it. So here's what I've been working on. Um, hopefully I can get back in some modeling and 3D printing and other kinds of things, but um, sometimes life's a little bit like a roller coaster, so I've been really busy, but I got this done, and hopefully this can help some of you guys. I'll, I'll post the information below, and that's about it. So hope you liked the, the cat tool, and uh, thanks for watching.